okay, this is the last tool, which has many tools inside of it, about distorting something. Um, as you see, I've got the, still got the mailbox. I'm going to keep it, and I've got something else too. But what we're going to do is we're going to go under filter, and before we get way down here where it says distort, you're going to find out there's other things here. As you can notice, the last thing I used was wave in our last in the previous um, video, so that's always going to be up there. Or the last thing I used was, but I'm going to come down to liquefy, and liquefy is very very unique. So let's click on it, and you're going to get a very large panel coming up. So give it a moment. As you can see, it's coming in, and there it is, and it literally takes over the whole screen. You're going to see off to the left hand side, you have several different. Uh, tools that you're going to use. And on the right-hand side, these are all the properties of what the tool is. Well, the first one after I hover, hover is called the forward warp tool. So it's kind of like using the smudge tool. As you can see, the fingers pushing, it's smudging something. And I can set my size of my tool brush right here. And as you can see, I'm going to just use a bracket, bracket left, uh, you know, hard bracket left, hard bracket right. Notice the number goes down and increments to 25 or it goes up. I have my density. I would leave it there in my pressure, keep it at 100. Um, everything else below this, you don't have to worry about. That's something we don't have to worry. But it's the brush tool right now. So I can take something. I click, I hold, I push up. I click, I hold, I push up. This is very, very specific. What's inside the circle is going to happen. Notice I did Control Z for those three things. Control Z works in here more than just one um, uh, you know, one step. So please uh, use that to your advantage. Let's go bracket up if we go larger. Let's go super large. Kind of want to encompass this whole part right here. I can pick it and I can push it and I can pull it. I could take it, I can push it, I can pull it. And it looks really, really kind of cool. So that's just the, the, that we call the forward push or you, it looks like I say, like the smudge tool that we've used before. Now the next one, we're going to come down. Actually, we're going to go down to, to the fourth one here. It's called the uh, twirl clockwise. And that is a tongue twister for me. And it says clockwise and it only does clockwise. I showed you the twist tool uh, in distortion, the video before. If you want to go counterclockwise, use it there. Okay. This one only goes clockwise. Notice the same thing with my brushes. Actually, this now has a rate. So what will happen is you will uh, actually see how fast or slow it goes. The higher the rate, the quicker it goes. I want something slow. I am left clicking on my mouse, holding it down, and it is slowly twisting it. And that's all it's doing. Now, I don't have to do something that large. I can actually make this smaller. And again, using my brackets, say I just want to do the United States Postal Service right here. Click it, hold it down, and it will just twist what's ever inside the brush. So I can do twists on certain things. I don't have to do everything, and I can just do certain things. So again, inside the brush, that's what works. All the tools are going to be the same way. Whatever's inside the size of the brush is that's what's going to happen. Now, the next one here is, and this should look similar, it's a pucker. They called it a pinch before uh, in Distort. Um, these are all here together. If I want to click it here, I've got my big brush, bring it in. Notice how everything's puckering to the middle of the brush. So it's it's going into that middle. Notice anything else in the brush is not being affected. So you can use this by making your brush larger or smaller. With the other distortion tools we talked about in the last video, it was the whole piece or the whole layer was getting pinched or or bloated. So this one is more very specific based off of the tool itself. Again, we're going to go back one more. We have the opposite of that. It's the bloat tool, and that's where I keep coming up with it. So let's go a little bit smaller. Boop, 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 boop. I'm going to make this bigger like I did before. Um, I did this with the marquee tool, and what I'm doing is – for the pinch and the bloat, I am clicking right, I'm holding down, I'm clicking left, holding down until I want to stop, I let go and I'm done. So it's really, really easy. It's actually fun. You're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Um, a lot of people use Liquify because it's got so many tools inside a tool and it works out pretty well. Um, the next one is, as you can see, it's called Push Left Tool. So it's happening when I have a brush, it's, it's, it's only that it's circle, but when you do it, Notice everything when I move it is getting pushed to the left. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to come in and make a circle. Look at everything gets pushed to the left. So it goes to the left side of the brush. Okay. So it works really kind of funky and everything. Hence, it's called push to the left. You have to move it. If you just hold it down, nothing happens. It's a click, hold down, and push. Click, hold down, and push. Kind of like the smudge tool up top or what they call the push forward tool. Go back. 
Um, next one, these are for uh, making masks. If you're still working with a mask around it, you can do that for sure. Now, let's come up to these last two right here. It's the smooth tool. So say I take, and I'm going to push this out just a little bit. Oh, I went way too big. And I'm going to push a couple things out. Bip, 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 bip. And I keep doing that. Let's get a little closer to this because so you can see it. So we got something that's working like this. Now, what this one does is is the smooth tool. If I keep going, if I hold it down, notice it smooths things back out. So if you get too much going on somewhere else, it does. And then the reconstruct tool, as they say, is I can just pull it and go over it and it reconstructs the piece I had before. So if you are only looking for a, or, or you don't like something that, say you did something that had three or four of these on there and there's one small section you didn't like, you can use those two tools, the smooth tool and the reconstruct tool to bring back that section just what you need. And it works out really, really well. Um, so you have a lot of different things here. Uh, it's more freehand and freestyle rather than the other ones that distort are very much um, programmed in and you can only do so much. So this one's got a little bit more uh, room to work with. Let me do a control zero really quick and get you back to here. Now, the last one is we're going to get out of this one and we're going to go to a different picture. Yes, we're getting rid of the post, the uh, the mailbox. We are going to one of my favorite actors, Steve Buscemi, big fan of him in Reservoir Dog, uh, Mr. Pink, as he was known then. So we're going to go back to the liquify tool. And this is just for faces. So we come here, we go to our filter, we go to, oh, I got to get on that page, on that layer filter and we go to liquify you're going to notice in the tools as it's coming up on the left hand side with the tools you saw a face and it says a face tool and what will happen is you click it and it's recognizing the face if i hover over it you can see that it's recognizing certain things his eyes his nose the bridge of his nose his mouth and of course the roundness of his face over here on the right hand side we have a brush tool don't need that too much as you know that goes away we want the face awareness liquify and it will help you do all kinds of things. The size of the eyes, you know, uh, what we can do and how we can do it, the height and the width of the nose. I can click on some of these here. Like I could take this point right here and I can bring it out. Now it's only telling me it can go so far. And if I scroll down some more here, do, 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 you'll see face shape that I'm at set at zeros and stuff like this. The forehead, the chin and the jawline. I can actually just move these numbers and notice his forehead's getting bigger. I move shorter and as far as it's getting smaller. There's some presets in there that you can use. I did the first ones by hand by using the points and moving them. I can do his chin. Let's see what his chin looks like. Get a bigger chin like Jay Leno or we get a less of a chin. So it's very subtle and it works really well. The jawline's the same way, wide, or we can make him actually emaciated. Bring all this down like this and notice how we're messing around with Steve Buscemi. Okay. Same thing over there with his mouth, his smile, his upper lip. Um, as you can see, I can make his upper lip bigger, smaller. Uh, it's kind of really wild that I can do these things. I can give him a bigger upper lip or a real small lip. I am moving things so easily that I can manipulate somebody and age them or give them different facial features altogether. So that's over here on the right-hand side with the actual properties. You can use the numbers and you can, you can change those numbers. Like here's the eye, eye height and the eye width, left and right. If I want to link them together so they're the same, let me go back to zero here. And again, I'm working over here in the properties. I can link them together. And then when one moves, they both move. Okay. So it really it kind of works really well. Um, I'm going to unlink these. I'm going to go to the eye now. Notice there's there's one thing. This is the eye size. And this is the eye length. So I can mess out with the eye. Or I can actually do the eye size, which makes it bigger. And we can come here out to the maximum. Then I'm going to come out here too. Notice how Steve Buscemi's eyes are actually getting crazy. can bring these down a little bit more. And these are very subtle um, because the, the computer will let you distort so much. If you really want to make it gross and, and crazy, come over here and use the push forward or the bloat or anything like this. These are more subtle ones. I like this one here where I can move, move it. Again, I can make it smile longer. There's all kinds of things. And as you can see, I'm already taking Steve Buscemi and I'm kind of taking him away and kind of changing him up where you kind of even don't even recognize him. So this is over here under properties. You can use your mouse as you saw me doing it. 
bring the, you know, I think that's got up the most I can. Those are up maximized, but I can come over here then and use, let's say the bloat tool. Actually, let's use the, the, the forward push tool and let's give this a little bit bigger. And then I can come back here and we can elongate his nose a little too small. Control C. Let's go a little bit bigger and we can kind of take it and push down that nose some more. If you want to elongate his smile, let's come up here and do something like this. I mean, this is even more distorting, but the other one looks more natural and realistic, while this one definitely you know you're messing around with what's happening here, okay? So yeah, we can do some things, give him Mr. Krabs, whatever he wants, but that's the last tool, it's the face tool, and it only recognizes faces. So um, there you have it for liquefied. Uh, I don't want to ruin Steve Buscemi. I love him. But everything, again, under filter, liquefies right here, and you have all those different things you can do. All right, guys, this is the last distortion uh, video I'm going to tell you. Uh, I will be giving your project soon. Everyone have a wonderful day. Take care.